Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian back here again. I'm going to take you from the ground up, step by step, how to take what you see in front of you basically. Other than that shiny pipe sitting there at the angle, well, I have 40 feet of that, not just the little section. Uh, I just didn't want to put that up there on the truck. Uh, we're going to take basically what you see here in front of you and we're going to make this little truck right here, a Chevy Love, run on synthetic gas from wood. Uh, we're also going to precipitate out all of our liquids, uh, the crude oil, the bio crude, and our methanol producing products out of that smoke in the process and hopefully run that around our exhaust in the end, converting that over to another usable fuel and putting it into our engine. Uh, so let me go through real quick what we're going to have done here with what you see in front of you. Uh, like I said, the shiny pipe here at the angle, it's not just one little section. We need 40 feet of that actually for my truck here. Uh, that's going to help us create the radiator system as well as these three nice chunks of one inch black iron pipe you see threaded on both sides. Uh, those are all seven foot long right there. So that's going to give us uh, all together what 21, so 61 feet of piping between the two inch and the one inch uh, for our radiator system. And I can't imagine that that's not going to get our smoke from the synthetic gas production reactor here down below the uh, dew point. So I don't think we'll need much more than that. Anyways, so you got the one big tall tank here as you can tell. That big tank is our material tube. And so we're going to just cut a top, uh, a blow by pressure relief top with a big spring in this. Uh, we're also going to cut the bottom of that tank and we're going to attach this tank cut off right here right to the bottom of it because this tank's smaller than that one what this will do is that has a reduction point and that's actually where the paralysis is going to take place is right there uh, our pyrolysis process is going to actually take all that charcoal and then at the bottom of this tank instead of leaving it the same size I'm actually going to go underneath a little bit and make that slightly reduce more probably about an inch of reduction from the actual diameter of what you see uh, and that'll actually help us even reduce that charcoal, compact it just a little more before it has to go through. The smoke actually has to force itself through more of that charcoal, which will help convert more of it into an appropriate syngas that we need. A cleaner syngas, hopefully with less tar production. Uh, so basically that's where we're starting here. And the whole unit, that tank welded onto the bottom of that one, once it's done, will sit inside of one of our barrels here. Uh, about halfway down the bottom of the reactor, which will be this tank, We'll sit down about halfway into this barrel. And what that's going to do for us is give us a dead air space that the heat can travel around and that'll have this in the center of it, preheating our material inside of it. Preheating this and keeping this nice and warm, especially driving down the road, taking a lot of our thermal energy off as the wind passes by. So it'll be insulation in parts of this uh, and also air channels in parts of this so that the smoke can get to the top and get back out to the rest of our system. All right, and so you see the second barrel here. Uh, and the second barrel is going to be for our hay filter system at the very end of everything. Right before it goes out and into the carburetor, uh, that's going to be completely packed full of straw. That'll help uh, the final drying process after we've run it through all the condensers and radiators. Which I'll also have, like you see over in the other project right here in the background, those condenser jugs like that, I'll have a few of those sitting at the bottom peaks of the radiator system running above this bed. Now the radiator system is actually going to be bolt down right to here across the top of the bed line here all the way down on both sides. It'll sit as high as the cab slightly pitched in. It'll be a big two inch pipe radiator system running across on both sides. That'll help to make sure that a lot of our gas is well below the dew point and precipitate its moisture out of it. That's plenty of radiator and if not what I've done here with the black pipe is I'm going to cut that up and make my new tailgate uh, a radiator tailgate out of it if that's necessary. So let me get this started by cutting this tank and once I get this tank cut I'll show you about taking the measurements for this tank here, welding the two together and getting our reactor and our material tube put together here and then into our barrel. Alright folks, uh, just going to take you through real quick where we are on the tank project. Uh, this is gasifier conversion. So here, let me show you something real quick on cutting your propane tanks. First of all, if you smell gas in them, or even if you don't smell gas in a propane tank, you should fill that tank all the way to the top full of water. And make sure while you're cutting it that you're cutting in a water line the entire time. Do not allow a, a large amount of open air space in them. But if you notice here, this is the weld line from the top of the tank there. 
this is the weld line. I went right below it and cut around and I still had one more chunk of strengthening steel they put right behind the weld line to cut through. So if you go about a half inch below the edge of the weld line and make your cut, you won't have to cut through two pieces of steel like I did here. Hopefully saving you uh, quite a bit of your bits and some of your time. So what we've done now, is, since we've got the top of that cut off, we've centered it and set it on our larger tank here. That's going to be our volume tank for our mass and our wood there, the larger gray one. This one's our reduction zone, our first of the reduction zones here. So we're now going to mark that out and cut out the gray tank so it's the same size going into this. Weld these two together and we're going to take up here, take a three inch hole saw. I'm going to make a three way mark here and try to leave about a half inch gap all the way around, small amount of material in the center and take three holes out with a two inch hole saw and leave a kind of a pre-screen area here with two inch holes in it that'll help to make sure that the material is not dropping into my screen below the ash screen too quickly. So let me go ahead and get that done and I'll show you from there. Alright, like I said, I flipped the reactor now over. I've taken that top piece back off. just want to really quickly go over something here with you on the design. If you notice right at the tip of my finger right here, there's this black line carved in here right there going all the way around. That's the actual true dimensions of our uh, reduction zone here. So what I'm actually going to have is a slight reduction from the tank even from what the actual size of the reduction zone is. And what that will allow me is a small air gap right here and a downspout area that's going to allow for where my, our air inputs are going to be right here to constantly keep clean. The majority of the time if we have a little bit of an overlap here there's a little chance that something's going to come in and go back upwards and stay there anyways. Uh, I may get in there originally but it won't stay there so it's going to make sure our airflow is a lot more reliable with a small amount of overlap. So let me go ahead and keep going.